Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Chubbs Reviews where today we're talking about Persona 5 Strikers and if you know anything about Persona 5 and you know the main character Joker or if you've even played uh, Smash Bros. And that's actually the inspiration to where I've named my cat from which my cat wants to play right now. But look at him. He looks like Joker. Like if Joker was wearing a mask, like the main character. He also kind of looks like Morgana. But, you know, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I named him Joker from Persona which is very weedy, but oh well. And then my female cat, uh, which I have Harley, Harley, is actually named from Harley Quinn from the comic, you know, DC comics. So we got Joker, which you, you know, is actually from Persona, but you could obviously say how it could be Joker, you know, the Joker. And then we got Harley for Harley Quinn. Uh, and they're brother and sister, so they're not really lovebirds, but they fight like brother, you know. Anyway, a minute into the video, explaining my cats now y'all know the background the lore to my cats um and how they got their names persona 5 strikers is a great game <laughs> this is the sequel basically to persona 5 royale or persona 5 um i would check out my persona 5 royale review from a while ago i'll try to remember to put it in the description or in the first comment or the pin comment down below uh persona 5 royale is probably my second favorite game of all time at Persona 5 in general, the world of Persona is just one of my favorite worlds of all time, right behind God of War. So yeah, there goes my um, like completely biased fanboyism of Persona. And it is an anime looking game, so if you don't like anime looking things, you won't like the game, period. But in this version, I definitely say you should play, need to play Persona 5 or Persona 5 Royal, which is like 100 hours of a game uh, before playing Strikers, because this takes place immediately after... Persona 5 Royal, not immediately after, but a couple months later, and the group gets back together after the events of the previous games, and they go, want to plan a summer road trip. This game takes place over a month in game time, uh, compared to the original game took place an entire year. I don't know what my cats are doing. Um, so yeah, it's just a very much condensed, shorter, kind of dumbed down version of Persona 5, uh, but they completely changed the combat system. And this is where a lot of Persona 5 fans don't like it. And it also is probably not my favorite aspect of anything. Uh, they changed the combat from turn-based JRPG standard combat to uh, move, like turn action-based combat. Basically like, basically like the newest Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, but I like this combat a lot more than a Final Fantasy VII remake. And I actually enjoyed the beat-em-up combat a lot. It's like a Musou game. Uh, like Dragon... Not Dragon Quest... Uh, Dragon Warriors, like like those type of games, anyone's ever played those. It's called a Muso game in which they throw like a hundred enemies at you at once, like hundreds hundreds of enemies at you at once. And it's kinda most of Muso games are button masters, and this game has button mashing elements to it in which you can just basically rail all the enemies around you and destroy them. Um, and then you can also mix in your personas and use spells because enemies still have their weaknesses so many things it's impressive how many things from a persona 5 game from a turn-based combat system got brought over and carried over into this action combat system and it still works just as good and is great and i mean the combat system in this game is not deep as hell it's not super deep but it's deep enough it's definitely not just a straight up button masher because you got um, first of all, you got like a cast of nine to eight characters or something like that. I mean, not all at once, but you get two new characters in this game that are fucking awesome. Um, I won't spoil who they are or whatever, but I think we already kind of know. Uh, but the two new characters, the main characters in this game, um, are actually really good. They're not better than Maruki from Persona 5 Rail, but they're better than Kasumi. <laughs> they're better than like one of the girls uh, from the Persona 5 Rail when they added two characters. And they're up there with just great characters, both uh, Sophia and Zenkichi, if you didn't know. But they're both just good, good fleshed out, have really good moments. Sophia, uh, I'll talk about her as a character first, and she is a new character, and she, you get her right away. She is an AI in the world. You know this right away. She's an AI. You randomly get her. And it, you kind of have this arc of her from computer or AI to human or trying to understand heart and emotion. And, of course, that arc's been done before and even, like, Star Trek, The Next Generation, or just in, in a lot of things where uh, robots are trying to become human. And, and, but it, it just it's still done really satisfying and acted very well. And uh, I just like Sophia a lot more than probably almost every new character. All, all the four new characters in the Persona 5 world, she's probably second best. And then Zakichi, which is, like, this officer guy 
that is trying to help you out. And he's like a little bit older, but his daughter's like a big fan of the Persona of, of the Phantom Thieves. And it's just, I don't know, a really cool character, acted very well once again. And then we got the Persona 5 cast all back, all same voice actors, uh, English voice actors as well. And it's just uh, it's just really done really well. Um, like I said, combat is a beat-em-up style in which you are co you have combos. And the more you use a character, the more combos they kind of unlock. That doesn't really change how the character works, but it just adds to it and makes them a little bit better sometimes. Uh, each character, all eight to nine of them, feel completely different from one another. I mean, they, they use the same buttons, but their movements and how they play are completely different. Like Ryuji, uh, he's like your tank bruiser that has a skill that makes him where he can't get knocked down. So he And he has a charge-up attack, in which is just one huge charge-up attack, and boom. Uh, you know, you got Anne whipping her fucking whip around, just ha like just hitting so many enemies around her. Um, Haru has an axe that she hits in a straight line. You know, uh, Makoto will get on her motorcycle... Uh, Morgana will turn into a fucking car, and then it's just so much shit that everyone is completely different and unique, and I think everyone is pretty viable and usable. Uh, my final team turned out to be, uh, you know, Joker, of course, Ryuji, Makoto, and, uh, Sophia, or Sophie, um, if you guys even, I don't know, hopefully there's some Persona fans watching this game, watching this video, probably not, but oh no, I don't know. This game is just awesome. Uh, it is a fantastic sequel. It's got a lot more Persona 5 elements to it than you would think. Um, the music in it is phenomenal. All Persona music is great. Please check out my favorite music from games playlist and just listen to some Persona tracks or look up Persona OST. It is just, even if you don't like anime weeb shit, Persona music is pinnacle, peak fucking mu music. <laughs> um, I don't want to sound like too much of a fan, but what are the mechanisms of this game? Well, like I said, it is a shortened version of Persona 5. There are 7 to 8 dungeons, just just the same amount as in Persona 5, and they almost follow the, the same formula for some of the game, uh, uh, just like it did in Persona 5, and it gets a little repetitive in the game, but you're still curious to what's going on, and there's still good character development, but the, the way you're playing and what you're doing, infiltrating is repetitive, kind of like in Persona 5. Um, you don't infiltrate palaces in this, you actually have trade jails, and they explain everything, explain why it's not a palace and it's a jail, they explain why it's over, it's actually big ass cities instead of like instead of how the palace owner views the world. It's like how monarchs feel about the world. I don't know. It's something like that. It's it's definitely some more fucking mind thinking shit, uh, opening world shit. And by the end of it, of course, you're just saving the world, doing some never just huge wild shit um, you never thought you would do from the beginning. It's a great adventure. I, I like the fact that bringing over, you, like, knowing characters uh, or enemies' weaknesses from Persona 5 carried over here. Uh, you don't want to, the thing that's different about this is, like, you don't want to spam your Persona abilities at all. You, it, 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 compared to Persona 5, where you would, like, focus on upgrading your magic and upgrading your Personas and getting new Personas. And this, you still do that. You 100% as Joker can still capture Personas like Pokemon and combine them and make new Personas. And it's just awesome. Uh... But it's about, like, the weapons and the armor that you have. I, I remember buying, like, no weapons in Persona 5. The weapons didn't matter. It was all about the Persona and the magic. And this is about uh, the weapons as well, mainly and the, and the armor that you got because, you know, you're out here fucking fist fighting. So it's definitely just a different feel of Persona. And then also there's checkpoints in all these dungeons. And these checkpoints are kind of, are, are very non-life quality. And it's one of my bigger complaints, but it's still a small complaint. Uh, you can go to these checkpoints and you can leave the dungeon and ref refresh your mind points, you know, your SP, your magic points, basically, uh, in which you would, you, usually in Persona 5, when you go into a dungeon, you're stuck there, and when you leave, the day progresses, and uh, you basically miss out on time, and that's how you refresh your SP. And this, you can, like, leave the dungeon and, and go right back into it and refresh everything. There's no consequences to leaving a dungeon, which means that they should just let you heal as soon as you walk up to a checkpoint. It should just fucking heal you and give you all your SP back because instead of going and seeing these loaded screens, like, a million times because I'm constantly just leaving and coming back, it's just silly to me. It's very loud life quality. Um, and there's, there's kind of a few effects with that. They could have just made a lot more things like quality. It feels The game feels a little rushed. On, uh, on some of the menus and how they did things. and uh, But at the same time, it is very fleshed out. It is, like I said, it's all seven dungeons, but some of them are very short. Some of them are longer than you would like, but nothing bad out of the ordinary. Like, like in Persona 5, there's actually a distinct bad palace, Okumura's. There's actually, I don't think, a distinctly bad palace in this, and it's surprisingly well-done palaces, really creative-looking. Um, I mean, a little bland here and there, 
uh, but not, it, it's actually more, it's nothing like Persona 5 or Real or Persona 5. It doesn't really hold a candle to that, but it is it's still a successful sequel, and especially when you, I mean, did you guys really expect to get a fucking sequel to, like, one of the, the greatest JRPG of all time? Like, I didn't expect that, so I'm just happy to get it. And I'm happy it was so good, and it was actually unique, changing turn-based into action. It, it feels more like, like you know, casual players or people who don't like turn-based turn -based combat could play this. But at the same time, the game is kind of challenging. I thought the game was challenging. A lot of people's opinions is that the game is a cakewalk um, throughout, but I think it depends on how much you grind, how much you just want to keep moving forward. You know, what, depending on what your level is, that's how easy or hard the game is going to be. If you want the game to be easy, sit in a place and grind for a long time. Uh, and just keep doing that every once in a while. If you just want to play through the game, it's pretty challenging throughout, like how it was for me. Uh, the final boss was kind of easier than I expected, but still cool, still satisfying. The game, like these, Persona knows how to satisfy the sh like the fuck out of you. Like it's just like the greatest thing ever. That's the best way I can describe Persona games. Is they are just long journeys that are very satisfying. Uh, in comparison, Persona Five is usually like 150 hours long to 100 hours. This game was only 45 hours long for me, about 40 to 35 hours for my brother, so it's not nearly as long. Uh, you could feel that, you know, you feel that. But besides it just being a shorter, smaller version, it's, it's almost perfect. So for that, my final verdict for Persona 5 Strikers is a 9 out of 10. It's a must-play for pretty much anyone, but it's definitely a must-play if you played Persona 5 already. You, you probably already bought Strikers. It took me a month to play it, so here's my latest review on it. Um, I would even suggest it to casuals, and if you started to, if you liked what you fucking got about, you know, being Phantom Thieves and changing people's hearts and, and seeing satisfying turn turnabouts, if you want, like, the backstory to this game, then you know you can go play Persona 5. That is, it's, it is a turn-based game, but maybe this will turn you on to it, and I just want more people to play the game. So I can openly recommend this to anyone. You just, you just won't understand a lot of the callbacks, and they, they reference it, but it's not like... It's not like you're missing out on too much, but it's way more satisfying if you played Persona 5, obviously, before playing this. It is a sequel to that game. It's just, if you if this is the only chance you're going to get to experience Persona, fucking do it. So yeah, that's my plead with you. Uh, to not be such a Persona fanboy, i got to give it a 9 out of 10, not a 10 out of 10. I can't seem like such a fanboy. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.